Hi everybody, it's Alex Fournier for alexfournierart.com and artistic purposes. Today we're going to be having some fun drawing some costume characters. All right, let's get started. Today I'll be using General's Compressed Charcoal. The box looks like that. It normally comes in a, just a flat rectangle. This is sharpened just from drawing. I don't, I don't usually even spend time with a razor or sandpaper sanding this down. I just start very geometrically and over time it ends up sharpening up. All right, the other important tool we'll be using is a kneaded eraser. And it looks like this eraser is in need of some tender, loving, Hair, which we'll give it right now. All right, buddy, how's that? Does that feel better? Yes, okay. All right, let's take a look at some references, see what we want to draw. All right, how about this guy? Looks like uh, either he plugged in his suit into the uh, bike pump, or he's a pilot, or I'm not sure what. All right, so let's, we'll try to go loose. I'm gonna try my best to not go overboard with getting his legs off the page, which I have trouble with. So let's see if we can map him out with some leeway here. All right, so I'm just putting a few markers in here. And this one, it's really hard to see, you know, where is the anatomy, right? It's so puffy in the middle, but we're going to just kind of map out what we know from anatomy. And that's going to help us make sure we get enough room for everything proportion-wise. Okay, and I'm trying also to balance out, make sure he's not lopsided because I'm standing slightly to the side of the page here because of the camera. All right, since I do have the body kind of mapped out, I might just start with the face. It's a quick, a quick couple details in the face. Um, I don't always do this if I haven't mapped out the body because sometimes the body is more important to, to get accurate. But since I've already mapped that out, I'm going to just put this in here. Okay, so uh, when you're drawing smaller scale face or with a tool that's quite big related to your subject or your art, um, I would suggest emphasizing just a few minor details, right? So I actually need to fix this. Okay, so corners of the mouth, shadow under the under the bottom lip, okay? And then the shadows near the bridge of the nose, okay? Those are all things that still look good when, when you move away, right? When you move further away, okay? And his nose, I got it a little bit off. Okay, I'm gonna draw like a core shadow on the nose and leave Kind of room underneath. Okay. And there's this shadow leads to the core shadow on the chin. And I'll leave some room for kind of a bounce shadow underneath. If you've seen my other videos talking about bounce, we have exercise with a ball, okay? Light source, shadow, cast shadow underneath, right? Okay, so we have that. 
exercise for a reason, and there's tons that you can gain from understanding that. Okay, so we have a core shadow, we have a reflection underneath, we have highlight up here, and we have this shadow. Okay, so when we look at his chin, this is the core shadow right here that I'm talking about, and under here is the bounce that I'm talking about. Okay, and it's really a it's like a shortcut, but if you understand how to do it, you, you really are that much uh, further ahead in terms of three-dimensionality in your, in your art. Okay, we got some ears there. Okay, once again, this bounce. So do you notice there's a shadow across his forehead? Okay. Okay, so we're going to do that. And this guy's got like blonde hair. Not that we would have to do that in the reference, but if we wanted to. Okay, and then that means we're we're drawing just the shadow from the hair. Okay. Let's add our little, get our eraser into service here. Okay, and this one's got some nice dramatic light on the face, and so you get some of these uh, shadows around the nose, okay, around the eyes. Right, and what I would do, just to abbreviate it, is to do a little turning edge shadow right here and right here. And that's going to have the face coming forward and leave light on the outsides. Okay, we'll do that here too. You're kind of helping separate the front planes of the face from the back and sides of the face. And also giving a, a shortcut for the viewer to understand like three-dimensionality of the face here. All right, so we got our face, okay. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of bring that, that chin, or chin, I'm gonna bring that neck in. So I have enough room to kind of play with shadows, okay. So, let's start with the fun part. Here we go. Okay, Mr. Baggy, Baggy Hood. Okay, we're drawing some of these contours. Okay, not getting too excited yet, just kind of building. And what we're going to be doing, these shadows, the light source is above him, and so the shadows are coming down. One way to tell, how do we tell that the light source is above him? Look at his hands, look at the shadows directly below the hands. Look at his feet. There's very small shadows under the feet, right? So we know that the light is almost directly above him to, to create very little shadow that's harsh. And you see behind him as well, there's just a faint shadow of his body, right? So you see the, the light source on his nose and his forehead. So it's just a tiny bit in front of him to cast like a soft shadow here and a very hard mini shadow by the, by the feet. All right, all this talk about shadow is good news for us because with charcoal, the kind of overhead shadow is, is quite fun and easy to do in, in this kind of circumstance. So what it means is as we build any any hard shadows, it's we got to make sure it's underneath the stuff here, and that. Okay, so we're gonna go. Got this, whatever this is, this puffy inflatable. Maybe maybe he can swim in this suit. I guess. Okay, we got to get to where are his shoulders over there. Okay, and you'll notice that kind of as I build these, I kind of, I kind of try to build it together so I don't get too, too out of bounds. Okay, so we got his arms lead down to like this big 
This big kind of wrinkle down here. Okay, this is a shadow from his outfit there. Okay, and so let's say his real waist is here. These are, you know, coming down to, to there, and they're gonna end up actually on the kind of on the front side of his leg. Okay? So we don't want to finish all the details there because it looks like we have like an overlapping pocket that's right here. Alright, so let's you know just get a little bit of his hand here since there's no overlap on this side. And over here we can we can actually show that wrinkle ahead of time from his pants. Okay, doesn't take much. Um, we're gonna just imply his fingers by just nestling in and moving to the side. You see that? Okay, same thing here, and we'll go the other direction. And you can you can cheat sometimes by just not you don't have to always communicate all the fingers. But do you notice how I left a highlight underneath? And that's this same principle. It's giving them some three dimensionality by acting like there's this bounce underneath in a core shadow. So rather than detail it all the way down, I start it a little loose. Okay, it feels like he's lopsided a little. So we're gonna try to fix that before we get too far ahead and maybe fix it by moving his, making sure that his, this leg over here is gonna get some, some play, okay? So that's important to look as you go, whether you're kinda getting lopsided or not. Which is certainly a risk if you're doing what I'm doing, which is to, to build kinda from the top down. Now we did have a little structure, but we do still have to double check. All right, so let's jump to this little overlap that we did. We kind of want to understand where is it going. Okay, so it looks like it goes like all the way down to his knee or something. Okay, notice how I drag in and I I like nestle in and drag to the side. And that's trying to imply this is lower than this, okay? And, okay, get some wrinkles from, from the fabric. Okay, I'm not quite sure if it's just tied in there, but I feel like could you go to the bathroom in this suit? Like, is it able to be opened within, you know, the five seconds that, that a kid needs to get ready? All right, so let's get some of these puffy things going on. So we've got... Okay, so we've got some wrinkles from the hood. Okay, got some harsh shadows underneath that show that's puffing out. Okay, we can we can add some wrinkles with negative space where we just poke in, drag to the side, and then leave it, right? That's some wrinkles. And okay, this puffy thing. I'm gonna just get a few billows here. You know, just very soft to try to kind of work my way up to to understanding it. Okay. Okay, so right now I'm actually not doing the outer side of this, I'm doing the turning edge of this, and you'll see in a minute, but I'm adding the, the feeling of puffiness to it right now, which I'll then draw the border to over here, okay? So now I'm doing the border, okay? So that way we have the puffiness and then the highlight, okay? Core shadow and bounce, so core shadow, bounce. Okay, 
Okay. And we'll want to leave this a little better up to this harsh shadow because that's what's telling you that that has, that that's popping out. It's because of the kind of the clue on the shadow up here. Okay. Kind of cool. Cool outfit. All right. So, okay, this inner one seems to have kind of these wrinkles leading from the zipper. Okay. And you notice there's actually some highlights on the zipper. See if I can pull those back out. Can I imply there's a zipper kind of all the way down? I think, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because there's wrinkles. We don't have to have like a perfect straight line. You just kind of pick it up, let it go here and there. Okay. And let's add some texture to this side because Looks like there's some wrinkliness, some some bunching up going on over here. Okay. Over here. Okay, see how I'm building from where there's a harsh shadow, kind of like it's telling me there's an overhang. So do you see how I work my way up into these kind of harsh uh, shadows? And those are basically telling me kind of the end of a boundary where there's going to be fabric that puffs out above it, right? And so um, those are important parts to get right, okay? So I'm doing the turning edge on the inside. Do you see how that makes this pop out? Okay, once again, core shadow, bounce, okay? Core shadow, bounce, or highlight. It's just the principle of it is to have the border, the actual border, and a little bit of a bounce or a little bit of a highlight be next to each other but not connected, right? And then you get kind of a puffiness to it. Okay. Okay, you notice I've made a boundary on one of these. So it's also important to, where possible, have the boundary of the shadow is a zipper looks like okay and so that way things don't get too out of hand and it's easier for the viewer to kind of understand the language you're using okay and sometimes you don't even have to fill in the shadow too much because you did make a border around it and sometimes that's enough to give to give the impression of what you're doing. Because as you know, like art and style, there's a language to it. And it's really about communicating with the audience. So as long as you're communicating what style you're going for, they'll be able to follow you. Okay. So you, you try to follow the follow the rules that you determine as you go. Okay. And then that way there's a shorthand that the audience can understand. And if that if I do something too dark, I'll just soften it up by pushing into it with the kneaded eraser. Okay? So we've got this puffiness. Okay, let's start getting into kind of where are his Where's this leading to in terms of his his knees? Okay, you notice earlier I had said try to make sure he doesn't get too lopsided. And Okay, so Okay, and of course, I'm going to make these feet all the way to the edge, right? Okay, so I'm basically just trying to map out the contour here um, as a just a finer tuned version of how far does this go down. 
and part of that is really to like realize I might have to cheat on the feet just a little to you know to make sure they fit on the page here okay and over here okay and you see how there's kind of a abbreviated language of drawing feet from the front and most of it is that the heel is lower than or further back than that so that those are two separate pieces but on this side you don't even see the heel but you just have to in my view what you do is you very carefully draw the shape of what you see without thinking is this a foot right and to me that that's the the best way to learn how to draw feet from from the front is really to just study study it and draw it from that angle but not as a foot but just as a shape okay see these wrinkles i added in here okay okay let's figure out can we communicate these squiggly little it's gonna have some sort of bunched up thing and i think it's gonna still come down to this same principle we're gonna do like a core shadow little bit of a reflection and then the actual shadow cast shadow down here to make it look like well there's something there it's bunched up but we don't know exactly what it is okay okay we've got some wrinkles here but we also have to figure out this same kind of wrinkle thing from his like fluffy parachute thing. Okay, I think we communicated, you know, enough from it. Okay, he's got some sort of pockets down here. A couple of wrinkles. Okay, shadow from the pocket. Okay, complicated enough pants. Okay, we'll do a little turning edge kind of around this side. Okay, and then there's kind of this part that bunches up from kind of the, the the weight kind of pushing down on it from you know it's longer than the foot here okay a little turning edge on this side leave a highlight on the back okay we'll imply like a little shadow okay all right let's see what other details we've missed here Okay, he does have some sort of puffy pocket we might want to try to do over here. Okay, and notice what I'll do. See which way I'm I'm pushing. Okay, so I'm pushing away from it, but not too far because it's indented in that spot. Okay, tried to do the reflected light core shadow just like this okay and we have started to do like a, a lost and found shadow so the hard shadow is found right we can really see where it's defined and it fades away into a lost shadow here and that's not, I did not invent that term. I've heard it from somebody, but it made sense. Okay, over here we've got 
some sort of zipper because he might want to wear this as a, a short sleeve version when he's fighting the enemy. Okay. I'm going to do a little turning edge on the side of this billowy thing. And then I'll, I'll try to emphasize a little bit of shadow underneath this and add some puffiness there. Okay, so that way that looks like it's coming around. Okay. Okay, and I will want to put just a little bit of a turning edge shadow on this edge. Even on his hand, okay? A little bit of a highlight there. And that's just going to give like a indication of light coming from the outside here. Okay, and we can make his hand stand out a little more by shading around it. And of course we do have a cast shadow of kind of a soft one underneath here. Okay, kind of goes that way and then it gets lost. Get lost. Okay, same thing over here. Let's just get a similar, similar darkness. Okay. All right, let's get a little bit of a shadow under his little puffy thing here. It's not a little puffy thing. This is a big puffy thing. This, this is a parachute and a life preserver. Okay, so now we have it popping out. We have a shadow under it. We even have some details. We can even imply one little extra detail like, is it a seam or a wrinkle or, or something under there? Okay, I noticed a few little puffy wrinkles I wanted to throw in there. Kind of just give the idea of the the material. Okay. Do a little turning edge on that side. Okay. Some of our messy work there. Let's erase his little squiggles around his head. Okay. And I just want to maybe he's got a couple of wrinkles like leading towards the zipper. I'm just going to try to indicate that here. And that middle part just was looking too too bright, so I'm just bringing that down. Okay, so on this side, let's give just a little indication of a turning edge, okay, and got his puffy thing there. Okay, and I'm just going to darken a few lines just to 
get a little more unified feeling across both sides of him here. Okay. And we've kind of left his, his head is pretty much fine the way it is. But if we wanted to add any more, any more shading, I'm going to basically try to just shade what's leading under, kind of under this hood. Okay. And the only other, I might just do a little more of what his eyes are doing very simply. See if I can ruin it at this point. Okay. So we just indicated there are eyes. Okay, and see if I can just put a tiny detail in the ears, just enough that you know it's ears. Okay, and can't help myself, just want to do a tiny bit more. Okay. So I still have that bounce shadow underneath. Still looks pretty good. Okay. The highlights up above, I'm gonna just soften my shadows from the hair were just a little bit too dark. So I'm just softening those up. All right, not bad. Let's move on. Just get some shapes in here. She's got some heels on that make kind of the, the height of this kind of catch up. All right, so we have some basic lines in here that are going to help keep her on the page. And what I'm going to do is try to try to just line up a few of these to see if I'm on the right track. And that, see, the nice thing about, now these are from actual like fashion photography, but um, I think costume design is, is right in that same, same realm, especially as you see uh, costume design kind of behind the scenes, costume design in concept, in the, at the stage of concept, is that they are kind of placed like an action figure, right? Kind of, kind of like in the same way that, that fashion photography ends up. So that's why it's good practice to work from, uh, you know, when you need to practice, work from these kind of fashion uh, shots because what the designer's already done is simplified these shapes for you, kind of communicating, um, you know, how to interpret these shapes. And so it's, so it's a lot, a lot of the work has already been done for you in terms of, you know, how to make the form look beautiful or interesting or it's communicating something, right? OK. 
Okay, let's say we've got this ear over here. And I'm going to make her ponytail even a little bit higher just for effect. Okay, kind of based on, kind of based on this, this character. I'm kind of building like my own version of this character. Okay, all right, so, so we've got some of the head in there. Okay, we've got this kind of coming inside. You know, so we know that's that should work as long as we get our shadows right. Okay. Okay, just trying kind of the shape of the shadow. Okay, so because now we, we have our basic anatomy hidden under here. And so right now, I'm having fun with the the contour that goes around it and the interesting shapes that that makes. So to me, this is really the, a very fun part. Okay. Cause it's kind of, it's kind of like being able to play without, without too many rules. It's got the basic structure you're supposed to follow is, is, is what you can see from the from what you've drawn in. Okay, and can we? It's always the moment of truth. Can you make a lady's shoe look like it's supposed to look? Good enough. Okay, we've got these. We we do want it to kind of come to the inside a little. Okay, I'm going to emphasize this curve just a little more than is in the reference. And I'm indicating where I'm going to show that the that the jacket turns around on the front. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Okay. And this part is gonna go to there. Okay, and right here, we got some of this kind of bunched up. Okay. But we do wanna emphasize the calf right here. So So even though it's bunched up, we are trying to show some uh, some of the anatomy there. Okay, and this goes right off the page. Okay, I think we'll we'll be able to make it work. And up here, I think one thing I gotta fix is her shoulder is actually higher over here. It's like Okay, gotta get a little more attitude on the shoulder. Okay, her wrinkly sleeves lead to a hand that we can't quite see, so we're just gonna make a little, little shape there. In this case, Now, technically, 
Well, let's let's bring it to there because I've got an idea. Anybody see where I'm going with this? Okay. Okay, some pretty dangerous looking weapon. Maybe we need more more ammo here so and that actually balances out we were a little bit lopsided there all right so let's do the fun part okay and we could have fun with you know let, let's say we wanted to have uh, like do the better angle you know, let's say we wanted to add indication of, you know, military rank or something over here. Or we wanted to, you know, if this was a cartoon character, we could add, you know, something over here. Okay. So it wouldn't take much to... To emphasize this we could also add our own style let's say we've got like an indication there like a reflector as part of the jacket all right so let's try to get the jacket to look like it's overlapping this area Okay, so we've got a few wrinkles, make it feel like it's doing something, okay. Okay, it doesn't take too much, just a few wrinkles, feels like it's wrapping around the body. You just all you have to do is make sure that they follow enough of the anatomy that's under that it, that it makes sense, right. So I'm using the reference to tell me some of it, but I, I can make up my own as well, okay? And what do we got here? All right, this part should be pretty fun. So this part's fun because we are gonna define the three-dimensionality ourselves here, okay? And so it will be as good as we make it, basically, okay? So what I'm doing here, trying to add some of these wrinkles, okay? Got a wrinkle here, let's darken this wrinkle there, and we're gonna draw this one as a shape, okay? Okay, we want I'm trying to get this just right. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, and so what we do is up here, so we know that this would be another plane here, this would be a plane here. So we don't want to overdo it, but we can add up here, okay? we can add leading that way, okay? And a little turning edge up here, okay? The other thing is anatomy-based, like there's this dimple kind of in the 
there's a spine and then right here above the backside. So we can imply that up there. Okay. Okay, and what I didn't want to do up here, so you see how I went a little too far and it took away kind of the roundness of the back. So I backed off of that a little. Okay, so keep that in mind. As you do a line, if it turns out, oh, that actually took away something that I liked, um, you know, go ahead and take it out. We can do a little turning edge here. Keep it from getting too defined. Okay, because we don't want to color. Right now, we're, we're not coloring. We're, we're really defining the three-dimensionality, right? So we're not coloring because these pants are, are a certain tone. We're, we're just coloring shadows, right? Okay, so can we... Okay, with the anatomy, we're trying to play up the calf muscle there, okay? And over here, the same, same thing we would apply, right? So we don't want to lose like an indication that there are muscles under here, okay? Did you notice like a very faint little highlight I'm leaving like under here, but I'm going to need to make it not be quite as bright as what's below it, okay? And let's make a, trying to make just a little border on the bottom of the jean jacket. I'm sorry, it's not a jean jacket, bottom of the jacket. Okay, Some pretty cool stuff. All right, so we need a little bit more shadow up here. So I'm gonna do this as little shapes. Okay. Just staying, staying within the boundary, then I look. Okay, we want something else over here. Okay, then I look, see what it looks like. We've got a little bit of a, like a seam that's right there. And we've already kind of indi indicated where the belt, like the belt loop would be. Okay. Just adding a little turning edge on the hand, just so you know it's three-dimensional. Let's finish this detail on the, the pocket. Okay, and, and we don't need much, okay? Okay, with just that little couple strokes, we have a pocket. Turning edge on this side. Okay, so then let's do some turning edge on the, on the heel. Do you see how, actually I'll do a little wrinkle, right? Okay, see how the shoe comes to life with just a little, okay? And over here, okay. We're just implying the, like the heel. Okay, and I like how the darkness worked there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get just a little more darkness on the edge of this one to match. <clears throat> and I don't have to color it all in, but you see how I've indicated almost like the material, right? Is this leather now? Or is this kind of rubberized kind of a kind of thing, right? So there's got the depth of darkness and tones indicate um, an interesting material, okay? All right, let's jump back up to this. And actually, could I, could I change the hairstyle a little bit? Okay, 
We shall see if I can. Okay, so we can still retain kind of the information, but what I was thinking of doing Moment of truth here. Can I make it look like this is shaved on this side? We shall see. Alex, it was really cool before that stupid hairstyle you wanted to do. Okay, and if it were shaved, let's say, then that hair would have to go kind of that way. Okay, and let's say she's been on planet for a little while here, so the hair is starting to starting to grow back. Okay. Okay, it's not the worst thing I've ever done. <clears throat> All right, so, little shadow under the ear. Try to get this angle of the neck is always a little hard to do. Okay. They just try to get it to to there. All right. Ken. Okay, and what I'm doing there is trying to help define like where highlights would be. Okay. And this is once again using the same idea from here, okay? Right, so if we have, you know, this hair is following a certain pattern, right? And based on this, we're adding a core shadow, okay? Highlight up here, bounce under there, okay? And then, oh, the, the next core shadow, okay? Core shadow, like a bounce, highlight, okay? Next core shadow. And so you're basically trying to pair, pair that relationship there's always a core shadow. There's always a bounce. There's always a highlight, okay? And it's going to help, especially with hair, it's going to help indicate the change of direction, okay? And then you can add just a few of these details. Stay out of the, the full highlight, but you can add in a few hair details, right? All right, so let's say... Um, we wanted to add just one little, one little detail here. Okay, not too bad. 
Okay, and we're, let's try to indicate there's like a something texture goes over the top of it kind of a thing. Okay, there we go. We've got some texture. Okay, not too bad. Now she's tough. I think I wanna get a little darker on this side of the sleeve. And right here, and that's to make sure we get the relationship here of the of the sleeve kind of overlapping over here. Okay. a little bit of a shape. Oh, it's too much. Okay. All right, moving on. What else can we put on this page? All right, can we draw this snowboarder and make them look like they're part of the resistance or something like that? Okay. All right, I gotta make sure I leave enough, basically enough room for the feet. It's kind of a wide stance. Okay. No matter where I put the head, I'll run them out of room, so. Just kidding. Okay, so basically I'm just building just a quick, quick couple details to to help me indicate, like, will I make enough room for them kind of a thing. So in this one, it's simple shape is kind of this long triangle, right? And so we do want to make sure there's, there's really this, this triangle stance to it. Okay, we'll make one of the legs behind the other one. All right, so in terms of real anatomy that's under here, okay, we see that, you know, the chest is around here, the waist is around here, okay, pelvis, okay, but that's where it, it, it kind of disappears. We can't quite actually see, okay, and so that's, that's where we're going to need to just imagine We got a knee here, okay, and it's going to lead to somewhere down here. We got some feet, okay, and because of the bagginess of it, you know, the actual crotch in the drawing is going to end up way down here, okay. All right, let's have some fun. Okay, so we've got, you know, top of this head raise it out so we have a little more freedom to do stuff okay the shape of the goggles are kind of fun okay I like quite oversized right okay As I said before, you're doing smaller size things, really major on the majors. And for those, that's gonna be like the corners of the lips, the shadow under the lips, okay? And up here, okay. Okay. 
Okay, we've got Okay, so in this case we've got the arm coming in, okay, and we're going to want to kind of get the wrinkles going for that, okay. Okay, we've got some sort of big scarf and we can, we can certainly, you know, have some leeway with that. Okay. All right, so we've got over to this other arm. We've got this shoulder is above the other shoulder. Maybe bring it even a little higher. All right, so this is kind of fun. So over here, this is there, but it's it's really kind of puffing out over to this side. Okay, so do you see how, actually this is probably a little higher because of foreshortening. Okay, so we've got over to here, got the hand, let's keep it really a simple hand. Okay, and we look at the width of this arm and determine kind of where the where the side of the hips are based on this this big suit she has on. Okay. All right. So we've got these seams. Got a little shadow from the from the what is it called? The arm. What is that thing called? That's called an arm, Alex. Okay. This goes down to somewhere. Okay, when you have to go to the bathroom, you gotta zip a long ways for this one. Okay, it's kind of diagonals. All right, so that got us down to here, okay? So we finally made it, we made it. Okay, and so let's draw these kind of fun shapes. Gets to a knee over here. Got almost like the feeling of like those fighter jet pants there for a minute. This is wrinkling over here, okay? And Okay, so we want these to really bunch up at this point, okay? And the way to do that is to slide the side of it in the, on the side of it on the side where there's an actual harsher shadow and then drag it into the shape of the other one, okay? You see that? Okay. And then afterwards you can always like try to define softly the other side of it, right? Okay, and then this is overlapping, and so this goes down. Okay, let's make sure we leave enough room for the boots. Okay, and say that one is conveniently hidden. Alex, did you do that on purpose because you don't want to draw the feet? No, I would never do such a thing. Okay. Once again, the trick with drawing feet from the front is don't look at it like a foot. Just try to think of it as a shape. Okay. All right, over here, we got a little shadow leading that way. Okay, we can do a little bit of turning edge to get some of this feeling a bit more 3D and puffy, okay? Okay. 
Okay, and think of it, you've got these wrinkles that go, kind of go up and down, right? And so that's really what you're trying to indicate here. All right, over here, you've got a little bit of kind of an indent being made, okay? Leading to like some sort of a pocket, some sort of a pocket that's as if you can put a hand in it, okay? And you need something over here. Let's use the turning edge technique on here. We don't want it to go fully to darkness over there. We still want it to have this three-dimensional turning edge kind of visible on the side. Okay, indicating like this additional light source. And it's it's in the reference, it's just a lot, a lot of times if you're not trained to see it, it's very light, right? And because that happens in nature anyway, we're so used to seeing it, we don't see it as anything special, okay? But it is special, very special. No, you're special. Okay, so we've got the hood comes around a little. Okay, what I'm trying to do is there's actually some shadow that we can do over there that's going to that's really going to build this three-dimensional look here, okay? What else can we do to this to make it more three-dimensional? The turning edge. Okay, so the front of this, let's add a little bit of turning edge, right? Turning McEdge. See how that popped out the front of that? And it didn't take, like, whole bunch of work. It's just one technique used over and over. <clears throat> okay. And over here. Okay. We're going to indicate kind of some shadows there. Now in this case, so we have the reference here. There's a pocket, blah, blah, blah. Well, in this case, we could, based on what I'm seeing here, we could just leave this shape here, right? This indicates this is a female, right? So we could just leave that little bit of a, a shape in there, a happy accident, as it were. And that just indicates a little bit of a form there. Okay? And that's the other thing with references is you should feel free Unless it's like some commission with Duke Ferdinand or something like that, that, or maybe in that case you have to, is the use the reference however you want to use it in terms of if you don't want to do the pocket or the or the extra piece of information, you can eliminate it by just not doing it. Okay? Don't feel like you're obligated. Which for many years I did feel that way. I'm like, I have to draw it. It's there. Um, but more recently, I realized I can draw what I want there. Okay. All right. So what did we do here? Turning edge. Okay. And on some of it, we can, we can add a little bit of tone back in here and there so it doesn't look too obvious. if you're so inclined. Okay. What do we got going down here? All right, so you can see there's a seam and then kind of like a wrinkle coming out of there. And so we can do something with that, although it might be a little too much, so I'm gonna soften it back out. Sound a Canadian there for a second. Soften it back out. A. All right. Okay. You see these little pockets? All I'm doing is just dragging just a tiny bit, and it can make it look like that that border, you know, that uh, seam is above the other one. Okay. Okay, and then if you want to indicate there's you know, some material here. You could very softly 
add in a tone on the other side. Okay, see that, and we're adding a couple tones there. Okay, this. Okay, and it's not important that I'm getting all these wrinkles like correctly. It's just uh, when you have a reference that's extremely wrinkly, it is kind of fun to to see what you can learn about wrinkles from drawing the real ones, or at least basing your wrinkles on them. Okay, all right, so let's get back to the face. Looks like I'll have to little turning edge on the side of the face there. Okay, and then it looks like I need to make the hair a little bit further that way. Okay. And I'm gonna add a tone here for the hair. Okay. Make sure the Make sure it looks like the bun is behind this other hair, which it does now. Okay, so, and then I just wanna get a little more highlight back out of the hair because it feels like it's too dark. Okay, so we got some fun reflections to do here. With reflections, it's fun to like draw the draw a shape before you start filling it in, okay? Because I think that's gonna not only look the most real, but it also what's reflecting are real things back there, okay? It's just that they're being bent by the contour of this of these glasses, and so. You know, the more it's like a definable shape, even though it's not clear what it is, that that's gonna that's gonna make it look more real, okay? And okay, okay, and then with my razor, I'm gonna kind of bring back few of these. Okay, so we have some more reflection. Okay, and then what we're going to do is underneath, I'm going to just add back a little bit of tone, maybe too dark on the, on the nose. And it looks like I just need to fix the the mouth because I have the glasses. I've made them face a little bit more the other side, and I don't want to have to redo it all of that. Okay, and so I'll leave a little bit of a bounce under the chin. Okay. Okay, I'm just trying to have the scarf be slightly three dimensional without too much detail. Okay. All right, so we have the face in there. This kind of fades away to, to nothing.
Okay, we got some nice reflections there. Okay, and we could do the hand. All I need to do for the hand in this kind of a deal is, is just touch it slightly and drag it to the, to the side there. All right, so just imagine with this crew, this one would have a gun on the back and would be chasing them on a snowmobile that also has wings. All right, hope that was fun. Hope you learned something. It was certainly fun for me. Be sure to subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Share it with your classes, your friends, your grandma, anybody you want to. And be sure to check out my website, alexforniaart.com. And be sure to check out for more content. We got lots on the way. All right, thank you. Have a great day.